Will Lucas Afrotech 2019 here with the man Kareem Webb. Thank you for being here this year. And can you talk to me a little bit about social entrepreneurship, social impact entrepreneurship, and that it's not just building a business for profit, but also to serve a community, how important that is to you? Um, you know, listen, you have to be profitable in order to raise capital, get return on investment, or to be sustainable in business in general. But for us, especially, we have an opportunity to do businesses that make an impact. And the impact in and of itself is a competitive advantage. So no matter what business that we're in, uh, when we operate a business that includes more people, solves more of a problem, helps our people be more competitive in general, it's a benefit to society. It's a benefit. When we all do better, we all kind of do better. And so, especially in the business that we're in, um, there's a tremendous opportunity to leverage um, what we do and what we know in order to help you know people who come from same set of circumstances that we come from um, win in life. And uh, we found that to be a winning formula. You're an entrepreneur, you know, true and true. I saw you franchisee also, and you do all these things. Why is it important for you individually to, you know, see what you see in corporate America and see what you see in franchising and see what you see where the dollars are being made and see a, a, a personal need to be like, look, my people need in a, a representation, but also the avenue to be able to make their dreams real? Um, you know, I think there's a difference between uh, happiness and fulfillment. Like happiness comes and goes, so does sadness and frustration. You can be fulfilled 100% of the time. And I don't think that you can be the descendants of slaves in this country uh, and win by yourself and still be fulfilled. I think um, for me, being fulfilled, look, being fulfilled looks like me leveraging all the blessings that God has given me to help other people kind of overcome some of the loveless circumstances that through no fault of their own, they've been born into. I've been blessed to have, to, to be able to be a franchisee of Buffalo Wild Wings, to get engaged philanthropically in, in what I think is one of the greatest cities in the world in LA. And now to be involved in an industry where um, there's so much amazing opportunity and need for people with my skill set to lead initiatives that can make a big difference. So uh, the money will be there, you know, you just have to execute against the opportunity. I think that's true and with any business or opportunity. If you just execute against the opportunity and leverage what you know and the positions that God has put you in up to this point, you will win in the end. And your focus on uh, other people first uh, will lead you to be fulfilled. I think when we're always focused on what is, what's in it for me, what's in it for me, what's in it for me, where that's when you're in that conversation in your head that doesn't allow you to just express your full humanity. When you think about the cannabis conversation in this country and historically, I guess it being taboo, well, I guess it's still taboo today, but things, things that put a lot of us away, but now there's so many people who don't look like us taking advantage of the opportunity why is it important that we not only get involved, but find innovative ways to change the narrative of cannabis? I mean, there was a time when cannabis wasn't taboo. It became taboo in the early 1900s if we really checked the history. You know, it was expedient financially for those in the liquor business and the tobacco business to make um, cannabis, which they changed the name to marijuana to make it spooky and to, to uh, uh, demonize Mexican people kind of similar to you know, what we see happening in the country now. Um, and because of that, uh, we kind of adopted, um, you know, the demonization of cannabis. And then you add to that criminal justice aspect of it and our mothers and churches and friends saying, listen, stay away from all of that stuff because we, you know, we know we're going to get disproportionately targeted and um, dealt with from a criminal justice perspective. But it's always been... Uh, taboo to be black in the United States of America, right? So we get to say, no, we're not taboo. Actually, God loves us all the same, and we get to stand with our two feet down and be fully self-expressed in this country or anywhere else. I kind of take the same approach to the cannabis plant. It can be abused, but it can also be leveraged uh, for health benefits, for sleeping benefits, for a lot of different things uh, that are uh, less harmful, more helpful, than the other thing, the other drugs that we use off the counter or alcohol or the ways that the other ways we recreate, right? So now we know that there are set aside licenses uh, because African American people have suffered 75 percent 
of um, the disproportionate application of criminal justice in the United States around cannabis. Uh, we should have more than 1% of the market share, which is currently the case, a $10 billion industry that's headed to 200 billion in 10 years. So we have progressive legislators around the country who understand that. And so there's an opportunity right now for us to grab, uh, to get engaged and earn the right to have businesses. Now the question is, who are we as human beings that get these licenses and stand up these businesses? Will we do that? Will we hire our own? Will we find ways to work with each other? Will we circulate the income? Will we take that revenue and compete uh, for real estate and businesses in our own communities the way that other people have rightfully done in their own communities? This is an opportunity to do it. We either will or we won't. Myself and Fourth Movement is going to stand at main and main of of what's right with respect to this cannabis opportunity. Kareem Webb, Fourth Movement, Will Lucas, Afrotech. Thanks, man.